Salamu alaikum, dear sisters. Our word for today is Allah's name, Al Quddus. We are hearing this name referred to with some of its attributes when we say the word Al Quds. Al Quds is translated in English as Jerusalem. And lately, we've been hearing a lot of arguments over this city. And I hope that I will clarify for you some of the words mentioned in Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad so that you can decide for yourself, knowing the meaning of Al-Quddus, which is an attribute of Allah. Perhaps we could better understand and think about the reality of what's happening and the truth of what's happening and the falsehood of what's happening. Our word for today is Al-Quddus. First, as usual, I remind you to open your Quran, inshallah, and we will read together from Surah Al-Hash, about this word. It's verse 23, Surat Al-Harsh. Please bring your English translations and your pencil to take some notes. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المحيمن العزيز الجبار العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون. In this verse, Allah speaks about Himself. Allah. There's no one else to be worshipped in truth but him. Al-Malik al-Quddus. Now we had the word before, Al-Malik. If you recall, it was in one of our first lessons and it means the one who owns everything. And not only owns everything, but can do with it what he will. At any time. As-salam al-mu'min. Allah is all peace. Allah is all faithful. He represents peace and faith. Al-muhaymin. He is the protector. He is the protector for things that could perhaps be lost. Here, we may think about Allah's referring to the Qur'an as muhaymin, meaning it protects the previous books, the Torah and the Injil. Al-Aziz al-Jabbar, we had al-Jabbar previously, the one who can enforce anything. Al-Aziz is the one who cannot be escaped from his power is so mighty. That's why Al-Aziz al Al-Jabbar, his power is so mighty, you cannot ever escape it. Al-Jabbar is the enforcer, the one who enforces his power. Al-Mutakabir, it comes from Al-Kabir, Kabara, big, huge. Subhanallah, amma yushrikun. Allah is far above the partners that they assign to him, the partners in power that they assign to him. He's far above that. He's nothing like that. Now, al-Qudus essentially means pure, free from faults, free from deficiencies. Anything opposite to perfection. 
We don't assign to Allah. Allah is never drowsy. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't get confused. He's not negligent. He never had parents. He never had children. We are not children of Allah. We are Allah's creation. He doesn't resemble any of us, nor do we resemble him. He has complete knowledge, capability, and wisdom, and he never falters an Adam's weight. He's always vigilant. He's always active. He's always fair, and he never oppresses. He never oppresses. He tells us in the Quran that we oppress ourselves. When we don't pay attention and take him seriously, when he says something in the Quran, you ought to know that you cannot escape this. Because his words are perfect. And his words don't change. The same things he said in the Quran, revealed by our Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are the same words that he said to all the other prophets. Allah did not send down messages to prophets to change his mind and tell us to worship someone else. No, Allah sent the one religion called Islam, submission, submission to his orders. And why would you not want to submit? He's all merciful. He's given us our hearing and our vision and our minds and our hearts. He inspires us to do good deeds and he keeps us away from evil deeds if we are close to him. And at times, even if we're not. Yes, Allah protects the disbelievers. As I mentioned to you previously, Allah protects and allows to live and live very well. Those who say the only thing he will never forgive, and that is that he had a son assigning partners to his power, even though he's already told you he's the Malik. However, in his mercy, Allah allows every creature to go on until the appointed time that only he decides. Today and recently, we have been seeing this land of Al-Quds torn apart by factions. We've seen bloodshed. The Masjid al-Aqsa is under siege. And there are those claiming it who reject the covenant that they made with Allah. They are not fulfilling the agreement that they made with Allah. Who are these people? Am I saying they're one group or another? Impossible. Impossible because if one was right and the other was wrong completely, we wouldn't have this ongoing situation. Allah has promised in the Quran that he will never allow disbelievers to overcome believers. Allah has promised in the Quran that he will give victory to the believers. Allah has promised in the Quran that the believers who were made weak in the earth will get it. Now, I know this subject may be a bit difficult if you are belonging to one religious belief or another. You may think you're all right if you say you're a Muslim and the others are all wrong and vice versa. No, Allah is allowing this struggle to go on because he knows that there are good and bad 
on both sides. He knows the intentions and he knows the aims and goals of both sides. Do you know that Muslims are not allowed to fight for any type of a authority or, or piece of land or a tribe? Muslims are only allowed to fight when they are trying to bring the words of Allah forward and some try to stop them. Now, this land belongs to Allah. Don't you think Allah knows that there will be various beliefs and intentions and everyone will go forward with what he has? And of course, no one's going to go forward and say, I'm an oppressor. I'm coming forward to oppress you because I hate you. No, of course not. Everyone's going forward with what they believe to be the truth. But we know that the truth is found in Quran and in Sunnah, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, we have been told through a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that we should not make extreme effort to pray in any masjid and specialize it other than the three, the masjid in Mecca, the masjid in Medina, and the masjid in Al-Quds. This masjid is called Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa means the farthest masjid. Now, there is a lot of religious history pertaining to these places. And perhaps in another lesson, I'm going to go through uh, what each group is saying about Al-Masjid, Al-Aqsa. But I thought I would begin with Al-Quds first, because after all, my lessons have to deal with Aqidah and Asma'allahi wa Sifat. Allah's names and his attributes, which is why I chose the name Al-Quddus. Do you know that when Prophet Muhammad would pray, he would say, Subuhun Quddusun, Rabbil Malaikati wa Ruh. He would call upon Allah and say, Allah, Subuhun Quddusun, you deserve ongoing praise for your purity. And you are the Lord of the angels and the spirit. A ruh. A ruh. We all have ruh. If our ruh is pure, we obey Allah. And that's how we have a pure ruh that we were born with. Remember, we were born knowing the shahada. La ilaha illallah. We don't know the exact way because it's of the ilm al ghaib the unseen world. But we do know from Quran and Sunnah that before we were born, every soul said the shahada. Every single human being on earth said, La ilaha illallah. How? We'll never exactly know how just as we will never exactly know what Allah looks like. But we're ordered to believe in the unseen. Yes, we believe in Allah. Many believe in, quote, God, unquote. But those who believe in God were always confused about what God looked like. In Islam, many, 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 many Muslims have never really tried to search in depth about Allah. Even though Allah describes himself in the Quran with his names and attributes, which is why we do have a good conception without having it visual of Allah's mercy, of Allah's qualities, of Allah's justice, of Allah's wisdom. 
And through these attributes, names, characteristics, we can sense once we have really internalized these names and characteristics, that nothing happens on the earth or in the sky to a people without Allah's willing it. So is Allah willing this strife that's occurring now? Well, of course. If Allah didn't will it, it would not happen. But does that mean that we're supposed to sit back and silently watch this mayhem? Of course not. We should never sit back silently. We should always speak out. We should speak out in truth and justice. Allah has ordered us in the Quran to not say anything about him except the truth. Well, where is the truth? The truth is in Quran. How many now will have the urge to pick up the Quran and to turn off all of the network news and perhaps even leave your phone alone because these threads, these constant pictures of bloodshed and innocent children and elders being abused in what's called the Holy Land, Al-Quds. Remember the meaning. Remember the meaning of Al-Quds. The meaning of the word Al-Quds is directly connected, as we know the Arabic letters connect. So here we have Al-Qudus, Alif, A, L, Lam, Q, Q, D, Wow, S, Al-Qudus, that's Allah's name, Al-Qudus. So if you remove this Wow, it will be Al-Quds. And that's why I chose to begin with it, because really, what a name for such a place now, Al-Quds, filled with violence, fear, anger. And yet, as I said, Allah allows this. Allah allows this. And Allah has allowed the mass media and the technology we possess today to have this situation spread all over the world. It wasn't like this before. So I'm praying to Allah that those who witness the dangerous situation we're in will bear in mind that Allah is the Malik. Allah is the Malik al-Quddus. He owns this land. He owns this land and will bring to this land peace or war. It's up to every one of us to keep up our prayers and to ask Allah to help everyone in that holy land and to bring the message of Tawheed and open the hearts of those who were perhaps negligent, disobedient, sleeping, sleeping through life. And remember, Allah has promised that the best will win. We have a saying in English, may the best man win. We say to the victor belongs the spoils. I'll stop here because I plan to make part two of this name, El Quddus, 
and to go more in through some of the history that has occurred, uh, taking it from the Quran, where Allah ordered some people from the tribe of Banu Israel to enter into this land. Al Ardul Muqaddasa, it was called. I'll save that for part two. And uh, who knows? Who knows what the news is going to be tomorrow, the next day. But while you're praying, the Muslims who are listening to this, remember, do what Prophet Muhammad did. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir. You will find these names in Surah Al-Hash. But when you're in sujood, I want you to say, Subuhun Quddusun, Rabb al-Mala'ikata wa Ruh. And think about Prophet Muhammad's perfection, the best man who ever lived. Not perfection as Allah is perfect, but perfection in obedience. When Prophet Muhammad heard the words of Allah, he would obey. There are others who hear the words of Allah and they say, we hear and we disobey. Instead of sami'na wa a'tayna, they say sami'na wa a'asayna. They even say we hear and disobey. Allah is all hearing. Sami'a. He's hearing. He's hearing the plots that are taking place now. And he alone will be the judge because he is Al-Hakim. He judges with wisdom. None of us can foresee what the end is going to be. Let's make sure our end will at least be in obedience, that we as Muslims are keeping up our prayer and our good deeds and that we're praying for the world. Let us pray for all of the world because all will be judged by Allah. And we are the fortunate ones who know this and can prepare ourselves. So many don't even know about Judgment Day. They don't even know why they were created. I ask Allah to bring peace, but I know that the peace will come to those who deserve it. And those who deserve punishment will be punished. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.